I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 20 years from Kenneth Hagin Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagin. Hello and welcome to Rama Praise. Man, I personally, now of course, I, I'm a little biased. <laughs> yeah. I think today's program is going to be fantastic. Fantastic. Yes. Because we have my dad, Kenneth E. Hagen. And he taught this message back in 1985. Yes. So the dress will be a little yes, bit different. The dress will be a little <laughs> bit different. But it's how to see spiritual gifts work in a greater measure. And a lot of people want that. He's talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit and they belong to the church. And he talks about what it takes to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Yes. He also talks uh, about learning about the gifts and, and, and to and desire it, these gifts. Yes. And then talking about how to pray, pray about the, the gifts. gifts. Yes. And uh, so, uh, you know... This is only be, it, it's, it's part of our special offer this month. Uh, it's a complete DVD, but because of the length of the DVD, we're not going to be able to play the whole thing. We have just picked out a certain portion. portion. Yes. And, and that's what you're going to see. But if you want to get the whole, the whole DVD. We'll talk about it later in the program. I'll talk about it later in the program. But uh, listen, let's go right now where my father, Kenneth E. Hagen, is talking to us about how to see spiritual gifts work in a great measure. Because so many of you were not with us, maybe real quickly, I'll try to do it faster, can we? We'll catch you up to us. There are a number of uh, methods or ways, either way you want to say it, by which healings are obtained through the Word of God. There are at least seven, and uh, there are other methods that are that will come under one of these headings. Though, now, first of all, of course, as we mentioned, John fourteen thirteen and fourteen, Jesus said, "Whatever you shall ask," the Greek literally says, "or demand in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son." If you ask or demand anything in my name, I'll do it. To the casual observer, you'll think he's talking about prayer there, but he isn't. He's talking about using his name like Peter did at the gate called Beautiful. With the lame man, he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Hallelujah. And so thank God we have a right to use that name. Then, of course, that name does work in prayer. Because in John 16, 23 and 24, he said, and in that day ye shall ask me nothing, that's the day we're living in now. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father. Now, that is prayer. In my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. Well, every believer has a right to ask God the Father for healing or for any other blessing that the Word of God declares it's his. And when he asks in the name of Jesus, according to the Scripture, Praise God, He will give it you. Then another method is found in Matthew, the 18th chapter, the 19th and 20th verses, where Jesus said again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything they ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, see there's the name again, there am I in the midst of them. And so where two are united and agreeing and asking in the name of Jesus for healing, praise God, we have a right to it, and it's ours. You know, uh, it's difficult sometimes to get folks in agreement with you. If you're not going to get somebody healed, you believe in they'll live and them believe in they'll die. There's no agreement there. I know I pastored nearly 12 years, and a lot of times I'd have to talk people out of dying and it took me some time to do it and talk them into living, then I could get them healed. In 12 years of pastoral work, never did bury one church member. 
Now, don't misunderstand me at all. We know folks are going to live their life out down here below and go home to be with Jesus sooner or later. But I'd tell my folks, even elderly people, don't die like this. Let God heal you and then die. God don't want you to die that way with sickness or disease. God said to Israel, and it can't apply to us, he said, I'll take sickness away from the midst of you and the number of your days you'll fulfill. Amen. Praise the Lord. Then, of course, that great, great classic text found in James 5, 14, and 15. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anoint all in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith to save the sick. The Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sin, it shall be forgiven him. Notice again, it's in the name of the Lord. Praise God. And then Mark, the 16th chapter and the 18th verse, the latter part of it said, They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Well, who is the they that he's talking about? They shall lay hands on the sick. If you'll read the previous verses, he declared, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. So that's who he's talking about when he said they, the believers, the believing ones, shall lay hands on the sick. And so every believer, praise God, has a right to lay hands on the sick in the name of Jesus. Now we know, of course, that God uses people sometime in a special way, but that also comes under laying on of hands. Now, for instance, the Bible said, and God wrought special miracles by the hands. There's the hands of Paul. So that from his body, your hands are part of your body. From what it said, putting the two verses together, one would suppose that Paul laid his hands on those claws, for it said God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. So that from his body, your hands are part of your body. We're brought under the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Praise God. But you see, that still comes under laying on of hands. Thank God. Well, yes, but now, Brother Hagin, that was Paul. No, that wasn't Paul. That was God. See, that's where we miss it a lot of time. We'd say, yeah, now Paul could do that, you know, because Paul was the Paul. Paul didn't do it. He said God wrought special miracles. It didn't say Paul wrought special miracles by the hand of God. It said God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. God did it. God did it. Hallelujah. And God don't ever change. I mean, he's still doing things like that. You mean he does things like that today? Yes. Man, we was holding a radio rally one time in Louisville, Kentucky. We just had, uh, my son-in-law was office manager then. We, we made a little tour, and most of the time we had one-night stands in different cities, you know, for uh, radio rally because we was on the radio there. And, and uh, so we had two nights here. We were in the uh, ballroom of the Holiday Inn South there in Louisville just for two nights. And so the second night, just before the service, a lady said to me, said, Brother Hagin, <clears throat> we have a, a, a lady of our particular prayer group that's in the hospital, not very far from here, about 12 blocks away. And uh, she has cancer of uh, both lungs. And uh, she's given up to die by medical science. In fact, she's uh, uh, under oxygen and she's in the hospital and... Uh, she slipped into a coma, and the doctor said she'll not live past midnight. Would you go and lay hands on her after this service? I said, no, ma'am. I, I, we, we, actually, to get to our next appointment, we just got to leave, you know. And I said, no, we're going to load up immediately. I don't have time. But do you have a handkerchief? She said, just a, just a regular lady's hand? Yeah. She said, well, I got a brand new one right here in my purse. And so she pulled it out, and I said, now, at the close of the service, when the anointing is upon me, and in manifestation, I'll lay hands on that cloth, along with others that folks had brought, and you take it and lay it on that woman's body. She's unconscious, so you, she's one of your prayer group, and you just claim her healing and start praising God for it. And so, there, so we, uh, I, I did that, and we went our way. We loaded up and left that night, all, you know, as soon as we could get uh, 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 everything loaded up. And so uh, about three months later, I got a letter from the lady. And she said, uh, now I waited purposely. I knew the healing would last, but I just waited purposely. 
to let you know about this. I took that handkerchief to this friend, member of our prayer group, and I laid it on the, uh, actually just lifted up the, the uh, uh, she's under oxygen tent, and just laid it on her chest. And she said about 11.30, now I got over there about 9.30, and laid that handkerchief on her. And about 11.30, suddenly she just woke up, said, I'm healed. <laughs> said they kept her there for two or three days and couldn't find any trace of it, all disappeared. Let her go home, and I just wanted you to know now that she's been back on the job working for the last two months. Hallelujah. Well, now, later on, we were in the city in a crusade, and I, uh, in the auditorium downtown, and I made mention about that. See, showing that God still does things like that today. And, and, and the lady came and said, I'm the lady. And this is four or five years later. She's still alive. Praise God. And another lady came up and said, Brother Egan, that same radio rally, I had a, a malignant tumor. The doctors had already taken a biopsy of it. It's malignant but said that you laid hands on me and prayed, and it completely disappeared. They had me scheduled for surgery, but I went back for examination. They couldn't find it. It disappeared. They didn't understand it, and I said, that's all right. I know about it. Fine. <laughs> Glory <laughs> to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So God's still in the healing business. Amen. God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Not Paul. See, that's where we missed it. said, well, yeah, now Paul was an apostle. He could do things like it. Well, I mean, uh, anybody could do things like that. Couldn't you lay hands on a handkerchief? <laughs> Amen, see? But if God's not in it, it wouldn't work unless you just use that as a point of contact. See, see, there's two things here. You could be my, anointed by God to do that, and that healing anointing will go along with that handkerchief. Or you could just lay hands on the handkerchief as a point of contact, you see, in faith, and when the handkerchief is laid on them, that's the point where they release their faith. Amen. Works either way, you see. Praise God. Well, then we noticed yesterday, uh, then we talked about gifts of healings, and I'm coming back to that in a moment now. We noticed yesterday that uh, we need to realize that healing is in God's redemptive plan. And we let, read Isaiah 53, 4, and 5. I'm not going to read them again. Matthew 8, 17, you remember that said, might be fulfilled that which is spoken by Isaiah. He himself took our infirmities and by our sicknesses. And 1 Peter 2, 24. Well, you see, this, uh, this method of healing, I believe, is the best one of all of them. But everybody doesn't get up to that place. But you see, here's the absolute fact, statement of fact, that by his stripes we are healed. These scriptures prove that healing is ours. And so we just simply know that by his stripes we're healed. And so we thank God the Father for our perfect healing and perfect deliverance. It's not necessary that we pray. It's not necessary that we have someone to pray for us or we ask for prayer because we know, praise God. Now, everybody hasn't come to that knowledge. Just because you heard me say it don't mean you know it. See, in other words, you might hear me say, you know, I'm worth a million dollars which I'm not, <laughs> but you heard me say it, but that don't mean that you know that I'm worth a million dollars <laughs> because I'm not. See what I mean? I might say to you, you know, I've got a thousand dollar bill right here in my pocket. Well, I don't have, <laughs> but right on then I'm using that as straight. I do have a one dollar bill here. <laughs> in fact, I got two of them. In fact, Christmas come along, I spent so much of them, I don't know, you see, it's, uh, my, my, my money clip anymore. I mean, <laughs> It's just, it's just about, I guess you it's about the same boat, isn't it? I mean, just about depleted. I'm going to have to get some more money or else mash that thing down where it's, <laughs> where, where, where it'll hold what little bit I got left here. <laughs> hey, hey, man, uh, you in about the same boat, you know? But now, like I said now, you, you could hear me say, I have a $1,000 bill here in my money clip. But, that, but you don't know that I have one there. You see, a lot of times we read scriptures and, and, and we say, well, I know the Bible said that, but we're not really convinced down here on the inside of us, in our spirit. You see, it's when we come to know it in here, in the inner man, when it works for you. Amen? That's the reason that, that you need to keep meditating on it, keep feeding on it, praise God, until it becomes a part of your inner consciousness. Amen? And then when you know it on the inside... Praise God, we know on the inside of us 
that he said in 1 Peter 2, 24, by whose stripes he were healed, then we know that the afflictions or sickness or disease or whatever uh, were ours were laid on Jesus and that he bore them and we do not need to bear them. And all we need to do is just recognize this fact, hallelujah, and then refuse to allow disease in our bodies, we are healed. Every believer should thoroughly understand that his healing was consummated in Christ. And if he knew that in his spirit, not in his head, it'd have to get in your head first, but read and know it in your spirit, then that would be the end of chronic trouble in the body of the believer. But everybody's not on that level. I think that's the best method there is. You'll be able to hook on to one of these methods. Amen. Because you see, there are different levels of development and different levels of faith, but God will meet you where you are. Now, let's go back. We talked a little bit about, I want to finish this up today. We talked a little bit about gifts of healings, special manifestations. And I wanted to come back to it. Now, let's read here in this 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians a little bit. Uh, for, for instance, first of all, the very first verse of the 12th chapter. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Let me skip down to the fourth verse and start reading. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Diversities means just different, different gifts. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it's the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Verse 7, For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith, or as the Amplified has it, special faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing. Actually, in the Greek, both gifts and healings are in the plural. Gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another the working of miracles to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Now verse 11, but all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills. That is, he divides the manifestation of the gift. He doesn't divide the gift to you where you have the gift, you can do what you want to with it. You see, our great problem is that in our English language, as well as in other languages far they're concerned, that when we speak generally, the, the word means one thing. When we speak specifically, the same word means something else. Are you listening to me? Now, I use very often the word miracle as an illustration. We talk about miracle drugs, miracle fabrics, we see a beautiful sunset, said that's a miracle of nature, or a beautiful picturesque view, and that's just a miracle. And yet the dictionary says that a miracle is a divine intervention in the ordinary course of nature. So none of them, specifically speaking, are miracles. Thank God for manifestations of the Holy Ghost. That's another method or means whereby healings can be obtained through the Word. Amen. But I think where we make a mistake a lot of time is we see those and we sit around and wait on them when we should hook on to one of these other methods. I mean, if that method's not working, get a hold of one of the others. Hallelujah. Go ahead and lay hands on people. You're, you're authorized to do it. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall recover. They shall recover. You see, God, a lot of times with these gifts of healings and special faith and working of miracles, which... Of course, uh, gifts of healings are strictly the healing business. Working of miracles uh, can be in the physical realm, all right, but they also work in another area. And special faith can work here, but it also works in other areas. Now, uh, for instance, I was holding a meeting in uh, New Mexico uh, in 1953, month of November, whole month of November, four weeks out of the month, three weeks out of the month there. And... Uh, <clears throat> The Lord had appeared to me, and this is not gifts of healing, just minister with the anointing. The Lord had appeared to me in 1950 
and laid the finger of his right hand upon each one of my hands and said, I've called thee and anointed thee and given thee a special anointing to minister to the sick. See? And I'd been ministered without anointing. Well, here was a lady in the healing line. I saw her back there. I'd have people to line up down the wall here to my left or their right and come across, you see, and I'd lay hands on them, both to be healed and to be filled with the Spirit. And I saw this lady standing in the line with a, with a, just a common side average, you know, pillow, bed pillar, and, and a baby on that pillar, I thought. And when, that, when she got to me and I looked in that child's face, I could see it wasn't a baby. Now, it had the body of a baby. It wasn't very much bigger than our, very little bigger than our four-month-old, uh, great, our first great-grandchild. Was born last July 28th. Amen. Actually, that child wasn't the body I'm talking about. The body part wasn't any bigger much, very little bigger. I'd say about like a six, an average, you know, you understand some are larger and some are smaller, but an average six-month-old child. Had to be not too big to lay on a common average size pillow. She just held it like that. But when I looked in his face, I could see it. It had the face of an older child. And I said to the mother, how old is this child? She said, four years old, between four and five. But she said, it's never grown. And she said, the doctors say they don't understand how the child's live. They cannot understand it. She said, uh, the child's never made a sound. Well, I looked at it, and his eyes were open. Didn't blink them, but their eyes were open. And I said, can it see? She said, the doctor said, yeah, that it can see and that it can hear. But it's never made a sound. And the child was on that pillow. It's quite warm and had nothing on except a diaper. Just lying on that pillow. Well, my heart went out, wouldn't yours? What if that's your child? I said to the congregation, what if this is your child? What if this is your grandchild? Wouldn't you be concerned? Sure you would. Then reach your hand in compassion and faith and love out toward this child. And I laid hands on that child and that anointing didn't go into Jesus. It said to me in the vision, when that anointing leaves your hands and goes into them, you know they're healed. It didn't go into that child. I knew it didn't. But I didn't have the heart to tell that mother, what do you do under such circumstances? I know you really enjoyed that. Uh, I did. That's right. <laughs> but but uh, I, Dad was one of the spiritual leaders of the charismatic renewal, and he's considered in the in in the faith area. He's considered just one of the modern day faith leaders, and uh, you know. That was a great message, but if you want to get the entirety of it, you need to get our offer. We Our offer, How to See Spiritual Gifts Work in a Greater Measure, my, my three CDs of our spiritual realities, and it's a subject I love to teach on, uh, who we are in Christ, uh, redemptive realities, I call it, and I teach on it in the school. Yes. And then your C your DVD of what is it's, it? It's a CD. It's a CD. Yes, and it's Keep the Fire Burning. And, you know, if we're going to see the gifts in the church, yeah. we're going to have to keep the fire burning through prayer. Yeah, you talk about prayer. I talk now, about prayer. Her passion prayer. is prayer. Now, all of these are, are, are available for a gift of $29 or more. So, hey, go right now to your computer and order these things right now. They, you want to get a hold of them. Well, this is Camp Meeting Week. Camp Starts Meeting Week. Sunday, July yeah. the 19th through Friday the 24th. Oh, yeah. It's going to be great. Yes, and I, I believe the fire is going to be burning brightly oh, in yeah. our meetings. Right. Yes. So it starts on Sunday night, 6 p.m., and then Monday through Friday, 10 a.m., 2.30 p.m., and 7.30 p.m. So we invite you to come. We're going to have an awesome time. Yes, we are. There's an awesome time for the youth. Yep. Uh, they call it Youth Summer Blitz, and then we have children's services as well. So it's just a time to get renewed in the spirit. Oh yeah, go find out about it and and be here with us. It's going to be great.
Yes, and uh, enrollment is still open for Rainbow Bible Training College for the fall of yes. 2020. That's going to be quickly here. So right. we invite you to go online today at rbtc.org and learn all about Rhema. And if you, you know, are wondering what is my place in this time, uh, maybe you need to come to Rhema because at Rhema you learn how to hear from God and you learn how to follow the Spirit of God. Yes, and a large number of people actually come. They they just say they know they want to follow God and be involved mm -hmm. with things of God. And it's here when they start through that first year, they begin yes. to find out where God wants them, whether they're to go into a full-time ministerial position That's right. or into a helps, just go back home and help in their local church yes. uh, or, or get involved with the youth or the children. It's just, it's a perfect place to come and to find out where you fit in in, in the body of Christ to work for God. So come on and be with us. Go there to, like she said, to rbtc.org and find out all about it. That's and right. Enroll today. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, we want to thank all of you that are work partners with us. You know, a work partner prays for us regularly, and we yes. thank you for that because it, we can feel the prayers. And it's somebody that sends in an offering once a month. Praise the Lord to help us support Rama, keep this broadcast going all over the world. Yes. Uh, as we go out in our in our crusades and travel all around, we have many of you that come up and say that you're word partners, and we are excited to see you and to talk with you and to hear your testimonies. Praise the Lord. So if you want to be a word partner, if you are, we thank you. If you want to become one, you can go to rhema.org slash WPC and find out all the information right there and sign up. And so we want to thank all of you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and healing to, to the, the world. world. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And they're manifested through individuals as the Spirit wills. Thank God for manifestations of the Holy Ghost. How to See Spiritual Gifts Work in Greater Measure, a DVD by Kenneth E. Hagan. Keeping that fire burning on the inside of you. And a powerful CD by Lynette Hagen. Keep the fire burning on the inside of you. When we become born again, we are a brand new person in Christ. Plus, our new spiritual realities, a three CD series by Kenneth W. Hagen. All four CDs and the DVD can be yours for a gift of only $29 or more by calling toll free 888 Praise 8. Or you can log on anytime, day or night, at rhema.org to order. For Canadian orders, log on at rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.